What's going on Imperials? It's Emperor Cubone here. We just got another trailer for Pokemon Sword and Shield. It seems like it was kind of out of nowhere, so I don't know if they had this planned or if they just needed to restore some faith in the product after all the National Dex controversy. But even if we can't have all of the old Pokemon, we did get to see some brand new ones. This trailer officially revealed Yamper, the cute little electric Corgi Pokemon. But for some reason, they still haven't shown the other Pokemon from the E3 demo, like we haven't seen it already. Yamper makes total sense to have in the Gala region, and I'm pretty sure the Queen will have some. It's always nice to have early game electric types, and I'm sure that Yamper will do an adequate job. I also appreciate its new ability, Ball Fetch. Not only does it fit with a canine Pokemon, but it's actually very useful as a money saver to recoup lost Pokeballs. Next, I was very impressed with the new Pokémon, Roly-Coly. roly coly Oli here is said to have lived in people's homes for generations, allowing them to pick up all the coal that it leaves behind for warmth. What a wonderful symbiotic relationship! This Pokémon is also just really cool, as a literal pile of rolling coal hanging out in caves and such. I wonder if it'll evolve into some kind of rock motorcycle thing. But to top it off, the best part of this Pokémon has to be its new ability, Steam Engine. When hit with a water or fire type move, this Pokémon's speed will increase. That is incredible, especially on a rock type. They are really going at it with abilities in this game already. Next, I was even more surprised by Duraludon. This monstrous Pokémon is a Steel and Dragon type which is the first non-legendary that we've seen with this typing, and it only makes it that much better. It's made out of an incredibly resilient but also very light metal, so it's said to be faster than most steel types. And I'm assuming that means that its name stems from durable and aluminum? It's also been shown to be rivals with Tyranitar, which might not turn out so great for our Johto buddy, since Duraludon can grind down boulders with its distinct arms. I hope this Pokémon isn't like Turdinator and is actually part of an evolutionary line somewhere. And finally, I saved the Pokémon that was first revealed in the trailer for last because it underwhelmed me. Alcremy. This Pokémon is all about smelling sweet and it can spray some whipped cream around everywhere, which is fine, but doesn't this rub anyone else the wrong way? We just had a dessert-themed Pokémon that was a pure fairy type. Sure, it's slightly different since you made the cream alchemy-based this time, but can we get something original here? I've criticized Fairy before for all of its newer entries since the type was created as not always being that creative. And this new one certainly doesn't help in that regard. But we can rinse that taste out of our mouths with new characters as well. First, we got Chairman Rose, who is the guy in charge of the whole Pokémon League. Apparently he's the owner of a large business, and he's the one that's mostly responsible for the commercialization of the whole endeavor here in the Galar region. Which is why there are so many signs and ads and things. But we also got to see his right hand, Oleana. I'm getting some serious Eastern European vibes off of her, but it's said that she actually handles most of the day-to-day -day functions, while Rose is more of the face of it. I just hope that Oleana isn't a part of whatever evil team there might be here. It seems a little too obvious for the way that they portrayed her thus far. Although I could go for some loose ties being implied, like what Malva had with Team Flare. Next, we got to see some more gym leaders as well. First was the fighting type leader, B, who I've gotta say, despite being a master of my least favorite type, I'm really digging it. Take note, Maylene, this is how you pull off tough but lovable. We also got to see Shy Guy, Wait, no, uh, he just looks like one. Alistair is one creepy dude. It's said that he never takes off his mask and spends most of his time in cemeteries. We get it. You like ghosts. But I didn't even notice this the first time I watched the trailer because I was too focused on taking in all of the newness of it. But apparently, these two gym leaders are version exclusive. B for sword and Alistair for shield. This hasn't been done since all the way back in the original black and white so it's kind of nice to see some deviations in the story like that be able to return. And finally, we learned some more about Dynamaxing. Namely, 
that's not the end of it. We now have Gigantamaxing, which changes a Pokémon's size and shape. We see Alchemy turning into the world's biggest wedding cake, as well as our friends Dreadnought and Corviknight getting in on the action. Now, we still know very little about the limitations of this mechanic. It's likely that it will still only last for three turns, like regular Dynamaxing, but I'm more interested in who can utilize this feature. My first guess would be that only new Galar Pokémon can Gigantamax, which, if they did have to design and render every new Pokémon in the game twice, that might actually explain their reasons for not including all of the old ones. But I'm wondering if it's even more specific, and only final evolutions in their line can Gigantamax, just like Mega Evolution. I hope it's not the case, because I feel like Alchemy needs to evolve at some point, but it would make more sense for them to do that than having every stage. But it seems to be even more hyper-focused than that, saying that only certain members of their species can Gigantamax, so it might actually be more akin to Totem Pokémon. Another aspect of Gigantamaxing is the moves. We already knew that Dynamax moves were powered up, but these are crazy strong G-Max moves that all seem to have beneficial secondary effects added to them. For instance, Dreadnoughs seems to blast the opponent with a Hydro Cannon, but then it also sets up Stealth Rocks. Alchermes is pretty funny talking about the dreaded High Calorie Cream Missiles. I imagine every Pokémon will have their own special Gigantamax move, further necessitating the need to limit those who can do so. I foresee this as something that will divide fans even more, since I could see how people might think it's a waste. But for me personally, it made me come around on the Dynamax thing a little bit more. I still don't see the need for, say, a giant Eldegoss, but if basically every new Pokémon has their own towering Mega Evolution, not just fan favorites that don't even need it, then I could appreciate it a bit more though I might not be so crazy about how rare they seem to be making it, only being found in Max Raid Battles. If they want people to try this new feature, then they can't hide it too well. Although now I imagine the whole National Dex cutoff was a preemptive measure for Gigantamaxing specifically, since it would be a bit of a pain to try and import these massive mutations of Pokémon into successive games. What do you think about all of the new Pokémon? the new people, and even the new features in Pokémon Sword and Shield? Let me know down in the comments. Also, be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And we'll see you around next time!